Hello and welcome to A-Level Biology with Miss Estrick. In this video, I'm going to go through genetics or inheritance pedigree diagrams, which are a type of application question for inheritance. So first of all, just to go through what we mean by a pedigree diagram and what the key points are, this here is a pedigree diagram. So it looks like a family tree. And it is actually a family tree of the inheritance of one, or it could be more than one gene. The individuals at the top are the oldest. So these here, one and two, would be the parents of five, six, and seven, and the grandparents of number 10. Anytime you see a circle, that represents a female. The squares represent males. The black shapes are individuals who have the condition of interest and the white shapes are individuals who do not have the characteristic. Now you will always get a key to give you the exact information, but these always stay the same. So it just speeds you up in an exam knowing that. So what are the types of questions you could get linked to pedigree diagrams? So first of all, you could be told that the condition is caused by a recessive or a dominant allele or a sex linked allele and you are asked to pick out a piece of evidence which demonstrates that and then explain how it demonstrates that it is caused by that particular type of allele. Or it could be the reverse. You could be asked to pick out a piece of evidence from the diagram and explain how it proves it is not caused by a sex linked allele, for example. And that's the most common one where they ask to prove it is not caused by. Finally, it's been asked to give the genotypes of a particular individual in the pedigree diagram. Now I've said five for example here, but they could give you any that you can work out the genotype. Or if there's multiple options of what it could be based on the limited information you've been given, the question will say, give the possible genotypes. And in that case, you have to give all of the possibilities that it could be. Now I have got a video that goes through that in a lot more detail for epistasis. So I'll link that up there if you want to check out exactly how to do that part on pedigree diagrams for epistasis. But let's have a look at some common patterns to really help you speed up and understand these application style questions. So the first one I'm going to go through is what pattern to look for if you are trying to find evidence to prove the condition is caused by a recessive allele. And this is the pattern that you always need to look for. Two parents, which are white circles, meaning they do not have the condition, and their child, whether it's male or female, has the condition. So you're looking for two parents that are not coloured in or white, and the offspring is filled in black. Now, the reason that proves it's recessive, because the first bit is giving the evidence, second bit is explaining, the explanation is both parents must be carriers or heterozygous for the allele because they do not have the condition, which means they must have a normal dominant allele. However, the fact that they have a child who does have the condition means that child must have two recessive alleles. So I've given some examples here of genotypes to show heterozygous parents. The child has inherited one recessive allele from each parent, and that's how they have the condition, but the parent doesn't. So that would be your evidence and explanation to get full marks on that type of question. Next then, the pattern to look for to give evidence that the condition is caused by a dominant allele. So this time, both parents um, would have the condition. So both parents would have their shape coloured in black, but they have a child who does not have the condition. So basically, it's the exact opposite of the recessive. So that's the evidence you're looking for. The explanation is both parents have the condition. And because this time the condition is caused by a dominant allele, we know they must have at least one dominant allele. But the fact that they have a child who does not have the condition means the child must be homozygous recessive. And that is only possible if they have inherited one recessive allele from each parent. So your explanation would be both parents are carriers or heterozygous of a recessive allele, but due to the presence of the dominant allele, they have the condition themselves. 
So that's your first two hacks, the patterns to look for and the explanation every time regardless of the information. The next example then that we'll have a look at is some modeled exam questions where we can apply that model we've just looked at, that pattern, but also starting to look at then how you can prove or disprove whether the condition is sex linked, because that's also a really common question. So here we have an exam question. The diagram shows the inheritance of muscular dystrophy in one family. Duchenne muscular dystrophy is a sex linked inherited condition and they're telling you straight away it is caused by a recessive allele. So we know it's recessive and it's sex linked. And one key thing that will help you, if you remember this fact, if it is a sex linked condition and it's recorded, it's caused by a recessive allele, then it will mainly be the males who have this condition because they only get one X chromosome because they are X, Y. And therefore, for a male to have the condition, they only need one recessive allele because they only have one X chromosome. Whereas females, because they are XX, they require two recessive alleles. So that actually links on to our first question here. We're asked to use evidence to show that, first of all, it is sex linked. And for this, the key thing is only males have the condition or you don't see it in females. And that links to the point I was just saying that it's sex linked and it's recessive. So we've only seen it in the males. How do we know it's recessive? Well, we're looking for the pattern that we stated in the previous slide. We've actually got three examples where we see this pattern of parents who do not have the condition, but a child who does. So for this type of question, you can either write out your explanation and evidence, or you can give the exact examples. So I've given you all four of those options. You could either say our um, evidence is two parents who do not have the condition have a child with the condition, or you could give any of those examples, which I've stated here, parents one and two have child five who isn't, um, who does have the condition. So next, Lee Fraumany syndrome is an inherited condition, which is very rare but it makes someone at higher risk of developing cancer at a young age. So the pedigree diagram in this case is showing how one family is affected by Lee Fraumany syndrome. Um, and we're told that it's caused by a dominant allele and it is not sex linked. Now this time in this example, they've given you exactly which individuals to focus on. So they're telling you A and B have children C and D. So that's all we're focusing on. So you have to explain how the phenotypes of the children, so C and D, provide evidence that Lee Fraumany syndrome is caused by a dominant allele and is not sex linked. So caused by a dominant allele, this is the pattern that I said to always look for. We know it's caused by a dominant allele because we can see this pattern of two parents are affected with a child unaffected. And that's exactly what the two marks are. C does not have the condition, but both parents do, so they must be carriers or heterozygous. Now, our evidence to show it is not sex linked, um, we could go for what I've annotated on here. And I would suggest drawing in pencil annotations of the genotypes to help you find the evidence. So if it was sex linked, here is what it would have to be. The male is XY, the female is XX. Now the male has the condition and it's dominant. So they must have a capital F, the capital representing the dominant allele to have that condition. The mother also has the condition. So we know that at least one of her X chromosomes has the dominant allele. However, the offspring, this female here, does not have the condition. And because she's female, she has to have two X chromosomes. And for her to not have the condition, she would have to have two recessive alleles. And if this was sex linked, that would not be possible because she inherits one X chromosome from her father, one from her mother. And the only X chromosome that her father can pass on has the dominant allele, if this was to be sex linked. And that would mean individual C would get a dominant allele and would have the condition. 
So that is your evidence that it is not sex linked. So father A would pass on X chromosome to daughter. However, she's not affected. So that is not the case. That's not what's happened. So top tip number three for the pattern to look for. This time it's the pattern to look for to disprove sex linkage. So if the condition is caused by a dominant allele, any affected father would always pass the condition on to any daughter they have. So that's what you need to look for if it is caused by a dominant allele to disprove a father who has the condition and a daughter who does not. So next question, colour blindness can be controlled by a recessive allele of a gene on the X chromosome. The diagram shows the inheritance of this allele in a family tree. So explain one piece of evidence from the diagram which shows that colour blindness is recessive but we have to take into account it's sex linked as well. So that's why the mark scheme here is not quite as straightforward as it was for the other recessive examples and within my evidence finding I have annotated on the genotypes. So looking at these parents and offspring here number four, number four is a male so they must be XY, number one is a male as well so they have to be XY and number one has the um, colour vision so that means they must have a dominant allele. Now number four has um, colour blindness so they must have the recessive allele so that is where I started. Now we know the parent here number two is female because it's a circle so they must have two X chromosomes. Now they have colour vision so they must have one dominant allele but for them to be able to have an offspring who is male who has colour blindness even though their father doesn't means that her second allele on the X chromosome must have been recessive and that is the evidence that has been picked out here in the mark scheme. Same idea for this example down at the bottom I've just only annotated it for the first example that I saw. So we know that parent two the mother has colour vision but their son number four is colour blind or you could say the same thing, 10 has colour vision but 12 is colour blind or 4 and 12 is colour blind but parents have colour vision. So any of those examples and that all indicates that the female in both cases 2 and 10 must be heterozygous. Now the next thing for giving the genotypes, again I recommend annotating on the diagram the genotypes you can work out and always do it in pencil so if you go wrong rub it out start again. So the easiest thing to begin with is just identifying females and males and we know that X is a female. So we know we're going to be using two X chromosomes. We also know from the key that the female has colour vision and because this is controlled by a recessive allele causing colour blindness, we know she must have at least one dominant allele. So that's your first step. Use the information in the question and the key to annotate what you know so far. So we know she's got X capital B, but we don't know what her second X chromosome will be carrying. So this is then when you need to look at the other individuals in the family tree. So look at the parents to work out the rest. And the key individual would be from the father because we already said that number four is colorblind. That means they have one recessive allele. And the father in sex linkage will pass on their X chromosome to the daughter. So if he has a recessive allele, so will she. And that's why the answer is this heterozygous genotype, X capital B, X lowercase b. So that is it for some of the top tips and patterns to look out for and some modelled examples. Those are really challenging questions, so I hope that will help you in approaching those and helping you to get full marks.